first we're gonna start off with some brief introductions. Okay, so here we're joined today by our professor, um, Patricia Hingston. She's our assistant professor of teaching with a PhD in food science, specialized in food microbiology. And she also has the role of faculty advisor for FNH and food science majors. And you'll be hearing from Patricia later today about the courses that she teach, as well as um, the research that she's been a part of. Okay, next we have our two student guest speakers. First, we're joined by Abira Arvan. She's a fourth year dietetic student. And we're also joined by Shaktiraj Kandola, a fifth year FNH and Bachelor of Education dual degree program student. Lastly, we're joined today by an uh, FNH alumni. Uh, this is Felicia Liu, and she graduated from the Bachelor of Science Food, Nutrition, and Health, majoring in food science. Okay, uh, first, I'm just going to go over how to submit any questions that you might have. So we'll be going over questions towards the end of the session, but throughout the session, you can enter your questions into Slido. So if you go to www.slido.com and you type in the code FNH, and you can just insert any questions that you have throughout the presentation, and you can upvote any questions that you, you feel you also have or you're also curious to hear about. Uh, so those ones might get answered first, and uh, all questions will be addressed um, at the end of the session. Okay. Now I'm just gonna go over today's agenda. First, we're gonna go over a brief program overview as well as look into the different majors in the FNH program. Next, we're gonna go into um, a professor highlight where Felicia will be, sorry, um, Dr. Hingston will be sharing about her research as well as courses that she teach. And we'll be also going over involvement opportunities available in uh, the, the faculty. And we have our students that will share a bit about how their LFS courses or the different uh, opportunities that they've been a part of in LFS. And lastly, we'll be going over some career paths as um, career paths um, in the food nutrition and health program. Okay. First, we're going to start off by going over a bit what is food nutrition and health. So. In the Free Nutrition and Health program, we really look into different topics, um, any topic related food, um, ranging from the production of food, food policies, um, the nutrition um, components of food, how we can edit food to better human health or improve the nutritional content of the food or make it more food uh, born disease uh, illness resistance or pesticide resistance. So really we look into a range of topics related to food and we also utilize uh, what makes LFS special is that in LFS we utilize uh, a holistic approach and we look at different systems. We don't just simply look into like the nutrition content of the food. We also think about how that may impact the environment if we choose to edit components of the food or a crop and we really use um, real life real world application by going on hands-on experiences through going to let's say the UBC farm or going out into the UBC dairy center to look into how um, different food policies or different ways we interact with food affect our health our policies as well as the production of this food. And we also look integrate our technical understanding of food metabolism and nutrition by looking into uh, how our food is digested, absorbed. And that those are important to understand because when we are maybe engineering our food or we're creating changes within the food, we want to understand how it's absorbed and whether the components we changed or the nutrition components that we're trying to enhance are actually being absorbed into our bodies. And we want, also want to look into global food trends and whether um, consumers would be open to trying to new food or how can we make them more uh, open to trying these different foods. And we look into how changing the chemical compositions might affect the taste of the food, the nutrition of the food. So we really look into a whole wide range. Um, we look take on a wide lens to look into food 
from different perspectives in the food nutrition and health program. Okay, so first I'm gonna go over just an overview of quick overview of the majors available in the FNH program. So first off, I'm gonna start off with the food nutrition and health general major, which is the pro major that I am in. So in this major, it's one of our most more flexible um, major options in the food nutrition and health program. Um, so here you get to take a whole wide range of courses um, related to food. For instance, I've taken like food science courses as well as new courses related to maybe more focused on the nutritional composition of food. Um, and in this major, you have an opportunity to expand into other fields as well. For instance, if you might be interested in how uh, commercials influence um, people's food choices, you may choose to take on some psychology courses as well. Uh, so in this major, there's really that flexibility and um, space for you to explore different, um, different fields and integrate it with um, food, nutrition, and health. And as for the nutritional science major, this major focused more on the science component of nutrition, looking into how food is absorbed, how food is digested, and thinking about how we may create, we, how the food's absorbed and looking into like the global population of health, or maybe looking, focusing in the community and how nutrition and different diets might impact different individuals. And the, for the programs that are highlighted in the different colors, the darker blue, those are our more comp our competitive majors. So they require an additional application to apply, but this is just for, because these programs might require additional training. So they want to see that you're a good fit for the program and you'll be able to um, fulfill the requirements um, that are needed from the from the program. So first off, we have the dietetics program. So if you're interested in maybe helping people achieve a balanced diet or helping a certain population that might be um, dealing with some disease like diabetes, where they have to have um, a certain, um, they need specific nutritional choices, to support their health, then this might be a major that's interested to you, that's interesting to you. And later on, we'll have our student Abira speak more about her experiences in the dietetics program as well. And you can ask any questions you might have about this major later on as well. And next off, we have our food science major, where if you're maybe interested in, let's say, the chemistry, the microbiology component, biological components of food, or how you can maybe engineer food to be more pesticide resistant or um, resistant towards foodborne diseases, this might be a major that's uh, of interest to you. And later on, we also have our Dr. Hingston, as well as our alumni, Felicia, that will be sharing a bit more about their experiences with the food science program major. And lastly, if you're interested in both maybe human nutrition and how the human nutrition, like the science components of human nutrition, as well as like food engineering and um, food engineering and changing the composition of food through the food science program, you might be interested in the food and nutritional science double major, where you would get an opportunity to kind of explore into both realms, both majors. Okay, so now that we briefly went over the different majors, uh, I would love to hear what majors uh, some of you incoming first year students might be interested in. So if you could share in the chat which major that you heard it sounds interesting to you or what might be something you're looking to explore once you come into the LFS faculty. Uh, you could just enter it into the Zoom chat. Okay, I see there's quite a bit of interest for the dietetics major from the responses I've seen so far. Oh, there's a student interested in food nutrition and health. Okay, 
it's great that I'm seeing a range of interest in the different majors. I see quite a bit more interest in the food, nutrition, and health in the later responses. Okay. Amazing. Thank you, everybody, for sharing. So I see there is definitely um, a wide range of interest in different majors. Um, I didn't see a lot of people talk about food science, but um, I think after Dr. Hingston's presentation, maybe you guys will get a deeper insight into what that major looks like. And it's honestly, it sounds like it's a very interesting major. And I think um, maybe some students might be interested in once you appeared from Dr. Hingston's presentation. So I'll pass it off to Dr. Hingston to share her research as well as courses that she teaches. Great, thank you, Ing. Hello, everyone. And yes, food science, I'm not surprised that most of you have not considered it as a major yet because I myself did not consider it as a my major. Um, and I actually ruled it out as being my major. I, when I went to see a presentation like this, I remember stroking through food science going, no, I'll never major in that. But then lo and behold, the next year I ended up in it um, through a path. But most people don't know about food science um, when they're in high school, uh, but it is really neat. It's about applying all the different areas of science. So physics, chemistry, microbiology, biology, statistics, all to the science of food. So you can never really get bored in food science. There's always something new to learn about and current trends in food. Now within the food nutrition and health program, I teach food microbiology, which is a third year course, and it is required for all food science and the double major students, as well as the FNH major. So if you're doing either of those programs, you will have me as an instructor during your time here at UBC. And food microbiology most closely aligns with my research expertise, my master's and my PhD. We're in food microbiology, specifically studying the genetics uh, related to the foodborne pathogen Listeria monocytogenes, um, which unfortunately can kill you um, if you consume it in food in high amounts. So it's a very deadly pathogen. And it was really interesting to study and why I love food microbiology so much. Now, some other courses I teach are the third year food science labs. So there's both a fall and a winter uh, course for food science labs where we do food chemistry, food processing, food engineering, sensory science, and a bit of product development all in one lab course. So that's a lot of fun. And it's also the reason that we only have 30 seats available in our program is because of the capacity of the lab. And you can see here a photo of, from my students a few years back enjoying the lab that they're conducting. So we only have limited amount of resources for the labs and that's why we have to limit our capacity. And then I also teach the fourth year food science industry research project uh, course where students work in groups with an industry partner to solve a product um, or sorry, rather solve a challenge or develop a new product that a company is interested in investigating. So that's a very neat course as well. Next slide, please. So one thing that's perhaps neat about me is while there are lots of researchers at UBC who conduct your what you think about as research being conducted in a laboratory setting. Um, however, as an assistant professor of teaching, I actually conduct research in my classroom now. So while my master's and my PhD was conducted in a laboratory, now I conduct research on my students, but not really students so much as my teaching practices. So what I do is find find new ways to engage students in the classroom and new learning approaches. So I find ways to help you learn better. So um, if you take a course with me, you'll see that I experiment with a lot of different learning techniques. And then I also will uh, evaluate those techniques towards the end of the course. So here's just an example of one thing I do to engage students is I use Mentimeter or iClicker, which are both polling softwares. And I always start off a lecture with a question related to the topic. So at the beginning of my food microbiology course, 
I ask my students what microorganisms are found in food so that I can understand where your learning is beginning from. Do you know about bacteria? Do you know about viruses and yeasts? Or have you never heard of uh, what's known as a prion before? So that helps me understand where I should start my teaching level from to meet you where you're at. Um, and then also, which of the following do you think is more likely to cause food poisoning? And I won't tell you the answer yet. You'll have to take my course. Okay, next slide, please. So then for the evaluation, so the research part of what I do is after I've used these new learning approaches in my classrooms, at the very end of the term, I'll ask you to complete some questions about how they helped you learn. So um, the first question I'm showing here is just a fun thing that I do in the courses. At the beginning of the year, I ask the students, do you think this course will change your life? And then at the end of the course, I asked them, did it change their life? And 85% of students said that my course changed their life, which makes me very happy because that is ultimately my largest goal as a teacher is to have an impact on you. A positive one at that. And then on the right here, I have an eye clicker question um, where this year I did multi-access. So I taught both in person and online at the same time. And I wanted to know from students which form of delivery they found to be mo more effective. So 31% um, of my students said that in person was more effective. 28% said that online was more effective. So almost the same proportion that found that in person was more effective. And then 40% found that they could learn the same either way. So that was a really interesting finding for me because I would assume that people would learn a little less um, via online delivery because they're not in the classroom and perhaps not as engaged or talking to someone or on their phones. But this showed me that some students do prefer to learn through virtual learning as opposed to in person. Next slide, please. Now, some other things I do is I investigate how to improve food science curricula on a global scale. And I actually lead uh, a group that is responsible for food science curriculums globally. So I'm always connecting with industry and looking for what should we be covering in the food science curriculums that we're currently not covering um, and making sure that that is up to date. And I recently published a paper on our food science program curricula. So if you're interested in the food science program, you can check out my publication if you want to know a bit more about it. And on the right here is an example of a curriculum map where I've assessed the level um, at which we teach each topic within the food science program from beginner to advanced. So the darker color are courses that are covering the left-hand categories and at an advanced level and the light blue are the courses that are covering at, at a beginning level. So you would expect that the lower level university courses in the 100s and 200s will have more light blue. And as you get to the upper year courses, you're gonna see more dark blue. So that's just an example of curriculum work that some of us do here at the university. Next slide. And lastly, just a fun thing about me, uh, I am program advisor for both FNH and the food science and the double major. Um, and I'm also, I love to do events like this, which engage students and tell them more about our faculty. Um, and any way that I can help out students, I'm generally happy to. So here are some photos from the food science club that you can get involved with. And each year I send five students to the States to compete in a college bowl competition, which is a trivia competition with buzzers. Um, and then the winners go to the international competition and can gain money. But it's a great way to network and uh, really test your food science knowledge and learn some food science knowledge. So that's always an enjoyable time. And I think that's my last slide. I will take questions later on. Perfect. Thank you, um, Patricia, for sharing a little bit about your research as well as the courses you teach. Um, I had the uh, chance to take FNH 200, which is an introductory introduction introductory food science course, and I found it very interesting in that I learned a lot about like the chemistry of like food might be altered, but sometimes us consumers aren't even really aware of it, or like sometimes the things that food scientists are more concerned about are actually the least concerning items of consumers. So it was really interesting to learn like from the different two aspects as looking as a food scientist, as well as a consumer. So thank you, Patricia, for sharing.
Okay, next we're going to look briefly into some involvement opportunities available within our program. So first off, I'm going to start off with volunteering. So in this photo here, we have two students at Agora, which is our student run, entirely student run cafe, where you could get affordable um, lunch options, uh, lunch options, and this ca cafe is entirely run by students. So you can volunteer there to develop your food skills, uh, your cooking skills, as well as maybe communicating in the team, collaborating in the team. And also if you're and first year, it might be kind of common to, that you aren't unsure what major you want to pursue yet. So you could take on some other volunteering opportunities in clubs like such as NutriKids, where you go out to present nutrition education workshops to elementary schools as a volunteer. If that's something you're passionate about, or you could participate in the food science club where you can host workshops um, very cool workshops like exploring maybe you might be making like caramel apples um if that is to see if that's something you might be interested in uh, and second involvement opportunity would be research if you're someone that might be interested in working in a lab there's um, a plethora of like research opportunities available um, on campus you could work in we have a program called work learn where students can apply and work with professors or it, it's a job where it's a little more flexible for students because the, the supervisor you're working with is aware that you're still a student so there's a bit more flexibility in this job and you while you're still developing like practical skills perhaps in a lab or it could be at our UBC farm um, so there's there's also opportunities within a club. Um, for me, instance, I participated in undergrad the club at UBC called Undergraduate Research Opportunity. So I participated in undergraduate research, working with a mentor in our faculty, where I worked with other LFS students to look into vitamin B12 status uh, of vegan slash vegetarian um, pregnant women, because uh, this population is often deficient, might be deficient in this nutrient due to vitamin B12 only being in animal-based foods. So there's a plethora of opportunities to kind of explore into research um, in UBC, or you may choose to take on practicum where you can gain these practical experience, hands-on experience while still earning credits for a course. So you'll be paired with perhaps a supervisor or mentor that will be guiding you um, to do a project deeper into a field of interest of yours, but you will still be earning credits while participating in this program. And it's just a great opportunity for you to dive deeper into um, your um, field of interest. Or you may choose to take um, on a co-op opportunity where you get to work at perhaps like a local company. Um, for instance, I've heard of food science students um, going into Purdy's Chocolate, um, which is a local um, company that um, makes chocolate and they get to like look into maybe how to make a chocolate more tastier or they want to enhance a certain flavor in it. So there's really a plethora of like cool opportunities that you can explore through co-op um, or research or practicum. Or lastly, if you're interested, maybe venturing out into another country and um, learning uh, somewhere new, um, exchange might be something of interest to you where you get to maybe perhaps take a term or term off to term to another um, university and you get to connect with students from different parts of the world to learn, uh, look into maybe a topic that you're interested in or study uh, in a course um, uh, that you are interested in um, in other parts of the world. Okay, so now we're gonna transition to have Abira Arvan, our fourth year dietetic students, share a little bit about her LFS experience as well as maybe how her involvement opportunities has helped her um, select her major and how that those have helped her in her program. So I'll pass it off to you, Abira. 
Thank you, Wang. Hi, everyone. It's so nice to have all of you join this session today. Um, I'll just talk a little bit quickly about my experience in LFS and overall, I guess, my journey to being a dietetic student. I just wrapped up my fourth year um, of education, so I am heading into my final year of practicum, which is super exciting. Um, a little bit about myself, I pretty much entered LFS through um, a high school presentation that the student service team get, gave, and I was super inspired because it felt like the perfect fit. I really, really loved um, cooking and baking, um, but I was also really, really passionate about certain social justice issues, um, and I kind of saw myself going into just a science field because I was good at it, and I guess everybody around me was doing it. But when LFS Student Services team came to give this presentation at my high school, for me, everything really clicked. And I did a lot of research before accepting my offer. And it was just like the perfect fit for me um, because it is very, very flexible and pretty much really global in scope. And I love that we're taking a lot of the science foundations and really applying them to um, nutrition knowledge or other sort of social justice issues like food insecurity, climate change. Um, and honestly, there's so many other things and amazing things that are happening in the faculty. Um, how I entered dietetics was my first year in LFS. I got involved with um, UBC NutriKids and I was taking a lot of courses. So I was really, really excited about anatomy and physiology um, in specific, really looking at how different nutrients impact people and what relationship food plays. Um, in people's lives. And I love that the dietetics program was really applicable. It gave me um, a credential to be working with different populations. And also, I love the fact that I would go on practicum and be able to kind of work in hospital settings. So last year, my first practicum setting was at Surrey Memorial Hospital, and I was working with in pediatrics. So um, working with a lot of young children and families and looking at um, nutrition status and how to improve that. Um, I am the president of the Dietetics Student Community Club this year. So those are the two pictures that you see on the left of the screen. Um, my team and I host really fun events like Meet the Dietetics Student Night or Meet the Dietitian Night. And I've had a lot of fun working with this group. I was part of the club last year. And then this year, I've taken the leadership role of being the president. And it's super fun. It's really nice to be in person and do virtual programming at the same time and just connect with a lot of dietitians or prospective students. So if you're interested in this major, maybe keep an eye out for this event that might happen next year um, in the fall. And then the picture on the right is uh, me planning the community dinner. So one of the fun things in dietetics is that we have this one class called FNH 440, and it's called Food Nutrition Management. So as part of the class, um, the project for the class is that you work in a group with uh, like six or seven other peers, and you plan out a large event. So sometimes a lot of the events have been in first year dining halls to plan out the menu for that um, day and really do all the cooking and prepping and kind of scaling up to make sure that all of the food um, is able to serve about 400 people. And so the project that I was part of was planning the annual LFS community dinner. And I was super excited because we planned the theme and we planned the menu and we're able to cook for everybody um, and hire like volunteers to be able to help us out. Um, and you see in the picture, I have um, my um, yeah, my coworker and another student, Olivia, who's in the program, and we were emceeing that night, so it was super fun, and we got a lot of entertainment, so I think there was a lot of skills to be learned through that class, and a lot of the group projects and the course really help you um, prepare for life as a dietitian. Um, yeah, I've been involved in other things, like doing some research in nutrition, um, and I'm super interested in looking at how food is a lot more than just nutrients, so I've recently actually given a TED talk about this topic. And so, yeah, I'm super passionate about it. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask me later on. Thank you. Thank you, Abira, for sharing your experience and providing students a little insight into the dietetics program. And yeah, later we'll have our Q&A session. So if you have any questions, further questions you wanna ask Abira, um, you can ask it, them then. 
And now we'll transition into our second student speaker for today, uh, Shatiraj Kandola, who's in who's a fifth year student in the dual degree uh, F and H and the Bachelor of Education program. Hi everyone, it's uh, great to have you here today and and uh, be able to show you a little bit about my personal experience within the uh, LFS faculty. Um, my, I am a fifth year student graduating this May in the dual degree program. Essentially, I am completing my bachelor's of education uh, concurrently or at the same time with my FNH general degree, general major. Um, it was an opportunity that presents to you in your second and third year. And um, when I first got into the faculty, I, I thought I was going into dietetics and I thought that that was the right choice for me. And, and it seemed up to, for most of like first and second year, it seemed to be that way, but um, I had the opportunity to work closely with some dietitians and, and be a little bit more hands-on in the actual career path that I was about to choose. And, and I found that, you know, maybe that isn't for me. And um, I was quite nervous and, and wasn't sure what, what I was supposed to be doing with my life or her anything because my career had changed and um, I realized it's, it's quite normal for especially when you're throughout your university degree to pick a different career to be heading down a path that you didn't expect to be on when you first walked in um, so things change very often and, and I had some great experiences throughout my five years here that uh, have guided me down this path um, in the top corner of the slide. I'm standing there with a, a couple of my peers and students. So that was the UBC NutriKids program. We were able to go out to a elementary school in Vancouver and provide a workshop for, I believe it was grade three students or grade two, uh, where we were able to teach them a little bit about the Canada Food Guide and what a healthy plate looks like. And then kind of teach them a little bit more about their fruits and vegetables using the rainbow colors and just food association and helping them build stronger, healthier connections with food around them. Um, and that was kind of one of those pinnacle moments in, in my degree where I realized I really wanted to work with children and really wanted to be able to help, help them establish healthy relationships with food. Um, in the bottom right corner, uh, that is the class LF, no, ooh, F and H 440, 450, I believe. I, I think the uh, LFS student services would be a, better be able to provide the code because it's been a while for me. It's pre-COVID. So um, this is an opportunity. It's a very fun class where it's a public health and nutrition class where you are able to work with a community partner and uh, devise a, a plan to um, uh, work on a certain project or a certain, um, uh, essentially you're working within the community to provide your nutrition advice. So I believe in this specific project, we were working with the Breakfast Club of Canada to integrate an Indigenous foods program within the um, within their pre-existing program to go into elementary schools and and secondary schools all across Canada. And uh, this was again, another one of those opportunities that, that really reaffirmed that you know, being in the B Ed program was was for me, and then um, outside of those academic opportunities as well, uh, the picture on the right here that is uh, from Imagine Day. And if you choose to, or if you have already accepted your um, uh, invitation to be a part of our wonderful faculty, uh, you will have an Imagine Day on the very first day of September. I believe it's September. I don't know the date, but it's a the very first day of school. So you'll, we, what we do as students is we come together and plan a very fun day for you to be acquainted with some of your peers and what the faculty does and UBC campus. And I've had the opportunity to do that for the past three years and help build some of that community. It's uh, a lot of students who do it in their first year end up coming back to help out in their second and third year, but it's a great way for you to, as a new to LFS student, to be able to just get comfortable with your surroundings, learn a little bit about the campus and, and slowly ease your way in. And so it's not classes the very first day. Um, but yeah, I've, I've had some really amazing opportunities on campus. Uh, I've also, am a part of a research lab within FNH, um, looking at uh, food care for youth and, and how to define food care and the 
kind of the social emotional aspect of eating for children uh, with one of the professors in the faculty, Dr. Jennifer Black. Um, so there's a lot of amazing opportunities for you to take and it's just about uh, being comfortable enough to take them. Thank you, Shatira, for sharing. Yeah, so I think like after hearing from our stu two student speakers, we really see that in LFS, there's different opportunities and avenues for you to maybe explore more into the program that you think you're interested in. And it's completely normal it's that in first year, you might be unsure about what program you want to select. Um, so that's why there's um, time uh, you can spend uh, on extracurriculars or even in classrooms where you can explore into your different interests and see what program might be, what major might be a good fit for you. Okay. Now that we've kind of went over the student perspective into the program, I'm kind of interested to hear into uh, what might you be interested in doing after your degree? Like, are there any particular careers you are interested in right now? Uh, if you can just enter them into the chat, that'd be amazing. Okay, nutritionist, dietitian, dietitian. So I see there's quite a bit of interest in the dietetics program. Consultant. Okay, I see. Uh, there definitely seems to be quite a bit of interest in the dietetics program. Um, so later on, if you have any, if any students have questions about um, the dietetics program, we have a beer here that can maybe share a bit more insight into that. Okay, I think that's all the response we have so far, I see. Okay. Thank you everybody for sharing. Um, so now that we're kind of talking a little bit about careers, um, I think it would be great to hear from one of our FNH alumni, um, Felicia Liu, who graduated from the Bachelor of um, Food and Nutrition and Health um, in the major of food science. Uh, we're, I'm curious to learn a little bit about like how maybe your LFS opportunities, um, involvement opportunities helped you. Um, find your career. Um, Felicia, I'll pass it off to you to share a little bit of your experience. Uh, for sure. I think, um, uh, first of all, um, my name is Felicia. I'm happy to share a little bit about my experience with LFS uh, with a lot of you here. Um, a lot of you are new students, definitely. Like a lot of times we are, we're just thinking about what we are doing. Uh, when we graduate, right? Um, so I started off um, trying to get into food science program. Um, I actually did my food science degree and minor in commerce within the four years. So that takes uh, quite a bit of planning. So definitely if we are looking into, you know, completing your degrees within a certain timeline or even um, looking at certain courses, there are definitely that planning that uh, really helps. And for me, especially uh, my student advisor has been really, really helpful in terms of getting me to through some of the courses that I shouldn't be um, eligible for taking when I was like a second year, for example, right? So that is a cost that is, you know, supported by our student advisors, uh, depending on your interest in terms of that. Now, uh, right now, my role mostly is to really help food businesses. So I have uh, expanded my career from just being a food scientist or food science that works in the labs or work in the manufacturing line to someone who is helping small businesses and small medium businesses and to a certain degree or uh, larger businesses to really build their food safety management programs uh, and making sure everything is kind of check mark in terms of regulatories, in terms of customer compliance. So those are basically, I'm just helping people to get into the grocery stores and grow their food brand. My interest has been really, really interesting because I have dual interests. So I have the 
uh, food science interests, I also have the commercializations in terms of uh, food businesses. So um, I guess after a couple of years, and I didn't realize how I did it, but after a couple of years, I combined them and I am actually in a consultant right now. So what you see there are a couple of pictures. Um, you know, two of the bottom pictures are the pictures that I was at UBC. And it takes me a while to find the photos from UBC because I'm like, where do I put it? And I didn't realize we took those photos. <laughs> And it's just, just amazing, right? So you see there, um, that is a FNH 425 that um, Patricia mentioned. So that is a very research-based uh, process, um, process. And we actually make some cheeses. We make some Gouda cheeses um, during the period of times to test the uh, impact of different uh, parameters, you know, this, uh, the pressures, the acidity, um, and the amount of yeast and stuff. Sorry, amount of bacteria, culture bacteria, and what type of bacteria will work in terms of building a cheese process. So those are pretty interesting uh, projects. That is a four-year project. Um, and you would see uh, also right now, I'm working with a lot of documents. So if you are looking forward to, you know, be a part of food safety management systems or quality assurance, or even lab and research, it does take a, a quite a bit of documentation in terms of um, getting things done and properly recorded and documented in the food industry, just to make sure, you know, we have a trail line of the documents um, to make sure we are able to prove to, to the authorities and governments and other regulatories and customers uh, what we're doing. Yeah. The other thing that I would probably mention is the LFS time entering. So uh, I hope a lot of you will be taking a one teacher LFS time entering. Uh, so those are the programs where you, you're getting mentors to explore what um, your careers are, you to explore some of your courses and I guess uh, re resume reviews and anything of such um, that you can work on one to one with your mentor. Yeah. Thank you, Felicia for sharing a bit about your LFS experience and how that, those have helped you shape into your career. Um, so like Felicia mentioned, there's a lot of um, hands-on experience opportunities available within your course, like this food lab she's mentioned here, where they made cheese. Um, and like beyond the courses as well, there's some extracurricular opportunities like maybe food science club that you can look into or like the mentorship program, like Felicia mentioned, where you would get paired with the mentor, you will automatically be paired with the mentor and you can um, um, explore maybe deeper into what their career looks like and see if that's something that you might be interested in. So there's definitely a lot of different opportunities for you to explore um, into the different majors available in FNH. And they definitely don't all just stand alone. Like in LFS, we learned that um, we take on a multidisciplinary approach where we learned that sometimes not one single discipline is enough for um, solving complex world issues. And oftentimes we actually need to blend those approaches um, to tackle these um, urgent um, world issues. Okay. So here we have just some, a few important dates um, to keep in mind um, that are coming up. So first off tomorrow, um, for April, tomorrow, April 27th, we have a careers in LFS session where you can hear from our career strategist, Rob Kim, um, to talk a little bit more about um, the different diverse career paths that LFS alumni enter into. Uh, and you will also see our other student ambassador, Jason, there as well. So that's definitely a, ses a session that you want might want to check out if you're looking to explore a little more into the careers available um, within the career paths that LFS graduates enter into. And secondly, we have um, the accept your offer of the admission deadline. So for most of you, it might be um, May 1st, but for some other um, students, if due to personal circumstances, it may be a later deadline. So just be sure to check on your student services center to 
make sure that you will accept your offer of missions before the deadline. And then as we head into mid-May, you'll be uh, automatically enrolled into uh, the LFS Roots program, where we will have mod modules will released um, throughout the summer to help you with registration, connecting with your LFS community, um, getting ready to perhaps if you're moving into residences on campus, um, just for supporting your transition into university, there'll be the modules to check out then. And if you're interested in the Land One program where you'll be learning in a smaller cohort of students and really um, taking use of those um, hands-on experience, perhaps like going out into fields to um, work on the topic you're interested in, then you might be interested in the Land One program and the application deadline uh, will be May 1st, 15th, sorry, um, for the Land One program. And lastly, there will be um, registration course um, timelines and in August and September, um, orientations to look forward to like UBC Imagine Day that um, our student um, Shatiraj mentioned earlier, as well as Jumpstart, if that's something you're interested in. Um, definitely something to look into. Okay. And here uh, we have just um, a few methods that you can stay in contact with us. Um, if you have any academic um, advising related questions, you can feel free to email lfs.advising at ubc.ca or you have any questions where um, you might be looking to learn more about the student experiences, um, you can email uh, the ambassador team at lfs.ambassador at ubc.ca. And you may also want to follow our Instagram LFS newsletters for all the latest updates on um, undergraduate related programs or just different opportunities that come out, um, as well as follow our faculty Twitter slash Instagram. Um, for to see any like cool projects that or research projects that um, our faculty is working on um, or talk see like our different um, community members um, or you can also head to our website um, at www.landfood.ubc.ca to find out um, more information on different faculty related um, matters. <laughs>